Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is fight day, June the 1st, 2019. Now, just a little commentary. I have a video on the Joshua Ruiz fight already posted. But, just a commentary on some recent events, because some fights have been announced, heavyweight divisions in flux. Now, I'll say charisma and love are weird things. You know, you do enough videos here online and you start to realize that certain fighters have a lot of charisma and are loved by the public. Doesn't necessarily mean they're the best fighter out there or even they're the best fighter in the division. But there's certain fighters who galvanized crowds, right? Manny Pacquiao, during the time in which I have done videos here on YouTube, Manny Pacquiao has more adoration, is more loved than almost anyone else I encountered. And this is during the Floyd Mayweather era, right? People respected Floyd. They loved Manny. Now what I want people to do is I made a video here and it surprised me a little bit but it's the latest in a pattern of videos concerning this fighter. I made a video here online, it's the video before the last video with a picture of Lennox Lewis, quite frankly a better fighter. Lennox Lewis and Anthony Joshua. Now let me just say this just casually just based on the number of responses to that video, right? Just based on the number of dislikes. You could tell a guy is loved by the number of dislikes you get when you criticize him. I have rarely encountered a guy with more charisma, a guy who you, the public, wants to believe in more than Anthony Joshua, right? Canelo is in the conversation as well. If you say something that's a little bit critical of Canelo, you hear about it in the comment section of the video. Someone will watch a 20-25 minute video, you say one or two things that are a little bit critical of a fighter, when you notice in the comment section of the video that that's what people are focused on. Right? When you notice that you're getting a lot of dislikes and people are saying, hey, I appreciate your channel except for your hatred of this fighter, right? And it's spilled over to my crime page. Then you understand I'm dealing with the guy who people love, right? It doesn't have to make sense. It's simply the reality. Just understand, I don't care what people are saying in public. I'm just telling you right now, by far, in a division with unbeaten Deontay Wilder, with unbeaten Tyson Fury, right? Wilder fought Fury in L.A., he's been fighting in New York City, fighting in the biggest venues. Just to understand, by far, the most popular heavyweight right now on the planet is Anthony Joshua. Right? He's the guy who fought before 90,000 fans. He's the guy who commentators like me need to realize when we criticize them, there's going to be blowback. Right? People love this fighter. Let me say this too. Let's talk about Lennox Lewis. Now understand, Lennox Lewis is a guy who had some huge fights right? He fought Mike Tyson. He fought Vitaly Klitschko, for example. He fought an unbeaten Michael Grant. Those were big fights. He fought Evander twice. Understand Lennox Lewis never had the box office pull of Anthony Joshua, right? And Lewis, like Joshua, Olympic gold medalist, Right? I would make the argument that Lewis was more fluid than Joshua. Right, That David Tua fight was huge. 
But what I want you to do is to look at the locations of Lennox Lewis fights. You'll find out that, you know, the Vitaly Klitschko fight in L.A. wasn't a sellout. You'll find out that Lennox Lewis fought Mike Tyson not in L.A., not in New York, not in London. No, he fought Mike Tyson in Memphis, Tennessee. Right? Lewis just wasn't box office gold. You didn't love Lewis, even though I personally consider Lewis to be one of the greatest heavyweights in history. Right? Lewis even had the colorful corner. He had Emmanuel Stewart, who had already presided over Thomas the Hitman Hearns and the Kronk dynasty of the 1980s. You still didn't love Lennox Lewis like you love Anthony Joshua right now. Now let's return to a sore subject here. Already I could see the negatives going up. The Anthony Joshua Deontay Wilder negotiations. Let me be clear here. I feel that AJ beats Wilder if the two guys fight. I view Wilder as a one-handed fighter. Anthony Joshua is a guy who's two-handed. Right? Anthony Joshua is heavier than Wilder. I believe Joshua's body is more muscled than Wilder's. I believe Joshua can handle shots to his body better than Wilder can. Wilder's had some bad parts of fights. I know, to Wilder's credit, he's taking on the guys who've given him tough times. Right? So he's going to be back in against Luis Ortiz, and then he's going to be in against Tyson Fury, a fight that was recently announced. Right? He should add to that list Eric Molina, who almost stopped him. So understand, I feel that if the two guys fight, AJ wins the fight. But what that means is that in a negotiation with Wilder, AJ has more to lose because if the fight doesn't happen it's AJ who has the missed opportunity on the win right if you believe AJ beats Wilder then the fight not happening hurts AJ more than Wilder we don't get to see the AJ win let me also make another point too the timing is more crucial to the guy who has more belts to defend. Wilder has one belt, the WBC. They're going to knock on his door every few months and say, hey, remember us? You need to fight your mandatory. Wilder has to deal with one mandatory from one sanctioning body. Right? That's his burden as champion. AJ has multiple mandatories because he has multiple belts. So understand the timing's more crucial for AJ because if this fight doesn't happen then AJ has more obligations to keep his current status. Understand had AJ fought Wilder and beaten Wilder and become undisputed outside of the lineal Tyson Fury then he could always give some belts back. He could always say, hey, I'm not going to defend the IBF belt. Bid there, done that, I already have these other belts. He might even give the belts away. Say, you know, I'm going to fight Tyson Fury, even though he doesn't have a belt. Because he's the lineal. Because I've already won these belts. But understand, as Vladimir Klitschko knows from years of living this lifestyle, when you have multiple belts, you have multiple responsibility. Right? To paraphrase Diddy and B.I.G., more money, more problems. So let me tell you what's been happening because the scheduling's a chess match. Tyson Fury's in the best position of everyone. He's the lineal. He has no mandatories. 
right? Understand it's foolish. It's just PR. For promoters like Eddie Hearn to be running around trying to sign and obligate Tyson Fury to some, you know, sanctioning body international title fight against Dylan White and all this other stuff. Why would Fury go for stuff like that? He's already the lineal, folks. You already know it. You already know he beat Wilder. Right? You, the public, is the ultimate judge. You know he's world class. He's a mockingbird for the rest of the division. Let's say AJ beats Wilder. Let's say the two of them actually fight during our lives. AJ beats Wilder and says, I'm the undisputed. You yourself know that Tyson Fury could say, how could anyone be undisputed without beating the lineal? Tyson Fury can fight who he wants. No one's knocking on his door to say, here's our mandatory who you have to fight. Then you have Deontay Wilder. He's in a great position too. Don't get me wrong. Wilder doesn't have the shine on him that Joshua has from having all these other titles. Right? He doesn't have to shield his eyes from the glare of the IBF title, the WBA title, and stuff like that. But at the same time, Wilder's workload is manageable. He can say, you know, my next fight's going to be Luis Ortiz. Because he's taken care of his obligation as WBC champ. So understand what's happening now. Wilder and Fury are picking their fights. Knowing that Anthony Joshua is obligated, obligated to fight contenders from multiple organizations. In other words, Wilder and Fury are fighting guys like Luis Ortiz. They're going to fight each other. They're in it for the money. And I understand that. I'm not, I'm not hating on anyone. They're in it for the money. Meanwhile, the guy who is left to clean out the heavyweight division in fights that don't have the box office pull is Anthony Joshua. So Eddie Hearn has Joshua fighting Andy Ruiz. Now I know a lot of people saw the way in and they're like, who's this flabby guy and stuff like that. Andy Ruiz is one of the world's best heavyweights. Just Google Dwyer and Andy Ruiz. Going back years, you're going to see I've been calling this guy consistently the heavyweight with the fastest hands in the division. Understand, too, the toughest man to beat is the man who mentally, mentally, feels he's never been beaten. Right? Andy Ruiz firmly believes he beat Joseph Parker. Look through Ruiz's career, you're going to see that he fought guys who were highly regarded at the time, like Joe Hanks, when Joe Hanks was unbeaten. Right? He knows he can hang at this level because in addition to fighting Parker in New Zealand, understand he's fought other guys who fought elite fighters. Debitrenko, his last fight. Andy knows he has faster hands than Anthony Joshua. He knows it. Now Joshua should be a boxing analyst. Of all the fighters out there, I feel that this guy is the most interesting when he talks about fight styles and strategies. Right? He's a guy who actually gets into punch patterns. Right? Joshua's a real cerebral guy. He's really well-spoken. He can break down fights with the best of them. But when you're dealing with hand speed, the million-dollar question is whether he's able to do anything about it. 
right? I mean, I could I could think about Ray Leonard's hand speed and say, Ray throws punches in bunches. Leonard likes to open up with hooks when he gets on the inside. Right? I could know that and not be able to do anything about it. Right? This is a difficult fight. The public seems to view Andy Ruiz, who should be razor sharp right now. He's just out of the Demetrenko fight. That fight's long enough ago where Ruiz has had weeks now to prepare for Joshua. Don't buy the last minute replacement hype. At the weigh-in, and it's a heavyweight weigh-in, right? So you're not worried about guys making weight. At the weigh-in, you notice Ruiz is significantly heavier than Anthony Joshua. Significantly heavier. More importantly, did you notice the attitudes of the fighters? Andy is laid back. Andy is the worst kind of confidence for an opponent. He has quiet confidence. Andy doesn't even feel a need to look tough. This is the guy who knows he's gifted. Right, the over-under on the fight is six and a half rounds. Folks, Andy has never been stopped. His one loss was a decision that was a little bit questionable. Let's just call the Parker fight what it was, a location fight. If that fight was in California, where Andy's from, right, where Andy lives now, Andy Ruiz is the heavyweight champ. When he signed this fight, Andy actually said, yeah, that belt from the Parker fight. He has my belt. He was talking about Joshua. Right? That's the belt Andy's interested in. Andy feels he was robbed. Andy feels this guy has his hardware. This is a much tougher fight than the public realizes. Well, let's, let's think about AJ's next move. Let's say AJ gets by Andy Ruiz. And understand, the line is huge. I got 9 to 1 odds on Andy Ruiz. How's that possible? 9 to 1. On a guy who has never been stopped. Who's already fought for the heavyweight title. Right? Think about it. Right? Understand, too. You can tell a fighter is in demand and talented by the people he's associated with. Andy used to be a Bob Arum fighter. Now he's an Al Heyman fighter. You don't think Bob and Al know a good heavyweight when they see one? <laughs> Guys, they're flocking to Andy Ruiz. Again, his only loss is a photo finish to Joseph Parker in Parker's backyard. That's his only loss. This isn't a 9 to 1 fight. I mean, it's, you know, I'm not saying AJ loses the fight. I'm not saying that. But wow. The public doesn't know how hard this fight is. I could tell you with certainty. AJ has never faced a guy with this hand speed. Well, now, Eddie Hearn is saying, in the fall, we're going to face either Kubrat Pulev, I think AJ beats Pulev, or Alexander Usyk. Folks, didn't Usyk just win Fighter of the Year? When you think of the unbeaten, tested guys in the heavyweight division, aren't there three... The champs, AJ, Fury, Wilder, and a fourth, Usyk. Folks, I got to tell you, of the big three, if I had to bet on one of them, it'd be Tyson Fury. The guy who, to me, would give Fury the hardest time is Usyk. Folks, Usyk's an Olympic gold medalist. 
Usyk's more fluid than Joshua. That's a dangerous fight for him. I'll even go further. While I believe AJ beats Wilder, right? I agree with AJ himself. He's calling the Annie Ruiz a tougher fight than the Wilder fight. I agree with him. I agree with him. Well, if he fights Usyk, and I don't believe Usyk needs warm-ups at heavyweight. Understand, Usyk's already been in the ring as an amateur with people like Joe Joyce. Right? Understand, Usyk, in the heavyweight division, is going to find that his fluidity, his ability to move, his ability to change styles. Understand, Usyk can fight you behind a jam on his back foot. He can fight you in the pocket low on his front foot. Usyk's flexibility, his fluidity is going to give him a bigger margin at heavy than it did at cruiserweight. You want to talk about a clean puncher too, look at the shots Usyk hits Tony Bellew with. I think Usyk beats Joshua. I think there's going to be increased pressure on Joshua to fight Usyk because he's not involved with Wilder or Fury. Because Wilder is able to fight Luis Ortiz, I think that's a dangerous fight for Wilder. I'm not sure Wilder wins that rematch. Then of course we're going to hear a lot about Wilder against the Lineal. So AJ is going to have people knocking on his door with tough fights. Let's be clear here. I think Usyk beats Wilder. I'm not buying the public hype in the slightest. Right? For me, it comes down to fight styles and ability and stuff like that. Usyk's the opposite of Wilder. Usyk has power. Usyk has two hands. Usyk's been adding to his game over the years. I view Wilder as a fastball pitcher. Right? It's that straight right hand. It's all or nothing. Right? Decentralized beats centralized. If I'm fighting you, and I'm not sure what tool you're going to use to beat me, you're a more dangerous man than if I'm fighting you and I know it's right hand or nothing. So understand, we can blame whoever we want. Right? We can blame whoever we want. But because that A.J. Wilder fight was not signed, a fight I feel A.J. would have won, A.J. now is left to fight the Wolves while the other guys have the safety of fighting fighters they've already fought. Think about Wilder's next two fights. Luis Ortiz, a fighter he's already beaten. Tyson Fury, a fighter he's already fought. He gets to fight in familiar fights. Right? Later today, I'm expecting the world to be shocked at how competitive AJ's fight is against Andy Ruiz. A fighter a lot of people haven't heard about. A fighter who people seem to be fixated on his physique more than the fact that he's actually one of the heavyweight division's better athletes. You know that just off the combination punching. It's fast hands. It's combinations. He's not a pot shotter. Right, and as I've said here too, you see guys and one guy's bigger, taller than the other guy. Right, sometimes that's a detriment. You mean to tell me Andy Ruiz is going to be right here throwing fast combinations? Is AJ a hunter 
is AJ the kind of guy who's going to know how to clinch and stuff like that? You want to see a guy who didn't know how to clinch? Look at the seventh round of Keith Thurman against Jose Cito Lopez. Now, fortunately for Thurman, who is a hunter, didn't know how to clinch, Jose Cito is getting battered, and his bright idea is to go backwards. Understand that works when you're fighting a guy who doesn't have great hand speed. If you're hurt and you can't clinch, and you're in against a guy with great hand speed, you're going to get battered. Right? Battered. I could see AJ taking Ruiz out early. I could see Ruiz taking AJ out early. By not signing the fight, the more glamorous fight, the heavyweight unification match with Wilder, by not paying a premium, by not offering him more than $15 million, AJ has not only not realized what he would have gained. It's not just the big purse. It's the victory over Wilder. It's the unification. But now AJ is left to defend multiple belts against people the public doesn't seem to fully realize are very dangerous opponents. So today he's in with a guy <clears throat> who has already fought for the heavyweight title who has only one loss and who has faster hands than him right that's a dangerous fight folks he's talking about fighting Pulev who he would beat like his idol, Vladimir Klitschko beat. Right? Or Usyk. A guy who's already in his 30s. A guy who was the king as an amateur. Usyk's always been regarded highly. A guy who won the Olympic gold medal. A guy who still has fought less than 20 times and has picked up multiple titles. A guy who's already won the World Boxing Super Series, WBSS, right? Who is faster hands, more fluid, harder to find in the ring, better feet than Anthony Joshua, right? I don't think Wilder or Fury are in any hurry to fight the guys AJ's fighting. Right? Someone made a decision here, rightly or wrongly, to not offer Wilder 40% and to instead choose this path. Folks, as much as we love AJ, this is the more dangerous path, quite frankly, than the paths of the other guys. Think about Tyson Fury. He's fighting some guy named Schwartz next. <laughs> right? According to reports, he has the opportunity to, to fight another tune-up fight before he hops in the ring again with Deontay Wilder. Because he's the lineal, he's not going to be forced to fight Dylan White. Right? He gets to pick his fights. That fight against Wilder, the rematch... Let's just hope he's not silly enough to be close enough to Wilder in the 12th round of the rematch to get hit and dropped again. I think he beats Wilder. Right? His road's a hell of a lot easier than Anthony Joshua's road. Right? The less risky path for Joshua to take, in my opinion, would have been <laughs> to sign up to fight Wilder to have picked up Wilder's belt and then to have started to give away the belts right just say hey I'm not gonna defend this belt 
You know, I've been to the top of the mountain. I've been there. I've done that. Just so he could free up his time to avoid dealing with very tough mandatories. Right? You're watching something that's not being reported in the press right now. You're watching the invasion of the heavyweight division by cruiserweights. Right? Usyk's a dangerous man. If you hear that AJ has signed to fight Usyk, and if you hear that Usyk doesn't have any lingering effects from the bicep injury that he suffered in training, I believe since Joshua's a bubble, right? You're getting Ruiz at a plus 900. You could take that hedged with Joshua by KO. Since Joshua's a bit of a bubble right now, you're getting tremendous odds on very dangerous fighters because the public has bought into the narrative that AJ, Fury, and Wilder are by far the best three fighters in the heavyweight division. I'm just here to tell you that's not the case. Right? I think Usyk right now beats AJ and Wilder. Right? Just just food for thought. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I know Wilder's loved. I know this video is going to get a lot of negative views. I understand that. Just understand, AJ is far more popular than you think. We're in a superhero era, right? People are flocking to the Avengers movie. We want to believe in Superman. This is not the 1970s, right? We're in a superhero era. And many of you believe that AJ is Superman and that the other champions are actively avoiding him. Right? Just understand that unlike Fury and Wilder, really AJ has a level of popularity that's not fully being reported in boxing media. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.